God is the God of hope. He's the God of restoration. And his arms are open wide for you to experience all that he is today. If God did it then, our God can do it again now. You may think it's over. Others may say it's over. But with our lives in God's hands, it is not over. The love of Jesus liberates our souls, steadies our feet, and gives us a hope that can never be taken away. Put your hands together this morning. For every battle you've won without question For every lie that you've silenced with love We acknowledge you in every victory, Almighty God For every promise you kept in the valley For every burden you lifted with ease We have gathered with great expectation Lord, we believe, never cease to amaze us. You never cease to amaze us. All of the praises, Lord, they belong to you. Jesus, receive all the glory. Take all the credit for what you're about to do. Sing every good thing, every good thing comes from you. That showed us your sorrow For every trial that taught us to trust We are standing right here in your purpose As you stand with us Jesus, receive all the glory, take all the credit for what you're about to do. You never cease to amaze us, all of the praises, Lord, they belong to you. Jesus, receive all the glory, take all the Somebody a punch on the shoulder next to you real quick. <laughs> it is great to see you guys. Psalm 113 says this, praise the Lord, 
Praise, O oh servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above the nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who is seated on high, who looks down from heaven to the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with princes of his people. And he gives, he gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Jesus, we exalt you this morning. We lift up your name and we know that you are the God of the impossible. Nothing is too hard for you. So I pray for the people who are watching today online and those who are in this room that you would encourage our hearts and raise our level of expectancy in faith in who you are and what you are able to do. We exalt you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
a shout for Jesus this morning. Man, Jesus is alive and he is moving in this place. Aren't you guys so glad to gather together? Aren't you glad you decided to get out of bed, see the sun, come in and worship? I know I'm so glad to be here as well. Listen, friends, as we move toward our time of offering, and I just want to remind you of something that Pastor Jason has said many, many times. We don't give to get. We give to worship. If you're new here, we invite you to participate in this form of worship as well. And that is the giving of our tithes and offerings so that we can see the name of Jesus advanced and lifted high across this earth and across this city. Can I get an amen, guys? Our scripture today is a simple one, but a powerful one. Because you see, Jesus didn't have to come. God could have chosen to just leave us in our mire, but he sent his son for us because he's a giver, he's a redeemer, and he's a reconciler of all things. So John 3, 16 says this, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have, possess, actually have eternal life. God is a giver, and when we give, that's one of the ways that we are emulating him, imitating his character and nature. Because God is generous, we also get the chance to be generous. So would you guys join me in praying for this offering? And as you prepare your hearts, I want to remind you that you can give in the boxes around the room or by the code that's on the screen. And as well as you prepare for taking communion later, make sure that if you don't have your communion elements, you can come down to the front and get them at this time or at the back as well. There are tables with the communion elements. So let's take our offering in our hand metaphorically or physically and let's ask God to bless what we give today. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that as a family, we get to participate in advancing your kingdom. Every day, your kingdom is, is taking ground. People are encountering you in a new and fresh way. And God, so we give with our whole hearts and say thank you as we give back to you as an act of worship to exalt your name. Take this offering and these tithes, multiply them and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. Is your endless love pouring down on us? You have made us new now. With you. Sing that again. Oh, your grace. And oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. I begin with you. It's your endless love. We're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free, forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life be, oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. So come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free, oh, forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began. Well, once more, if you're grateful that you're redeemed, set free. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord. Did you know that we're a friendly church? Have I ever mentioned this? I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. I want to mention it. Did you know that you're in a friendly church this morning? I want you to turn to 17 and a half people and tell them that you're happy to be in God's house today with the biggest smile on your face. Be friendly to somebody today. And once you've done that, you can make your way back to your seat. Make yourself comfortable. It's going to be a great day in the Lord our God today. That's true. Well, good morning, everybody. So good to see you. Uh, can we just welcome everyone joining us online and just give them a shout? We love you. Grateful for you. It's, uh, it's so interesting. Uh, so many people do watch online. And so, you know, we, we look at our attendance. And so when we're down on attendance, our, our online is up. So we're grateful to have this. And so if you're a part of our family, we love you. So grateful for you. Um, before I get started, I just want to take a moment. We, this week, we did observe Veterans Day. And uh, I just want to just recognize all the vets in our house. I know we got a lot of you. Can you all stand just so we can see you for a second? Yeah, come on. So great, so great. Come on, give them one more shout. We are grateful for you. So grateful for you. Thank you so much for your service. Well, we are continuing through the Bible, and we're looking at the big picture and plan of God. And I'm so grateful as we've leaned into Scripture, we're allowing the Scripture to define to us what is important to God, to speak to us about what, is, what really is this plan. And as we lean into this more and more, you, you're overwhelmed by the sense of a, of a God who loves us, of a God who is committed to us, of a God who's faithful, of a God who, who went and gave his only son to come and die for us, that God became flesh and walked among us. And this morning, I believe that God wants to speak to us in a very, in a very intimate way. I believe God wants to speak to you in a very intimate way. And so we're going to begin today and look at this, at this story, this beautiful story and picture of a, of a woman who has a great need. And before I get into this, it's important we understand that the God that we serve is, uh, many times we think of God as he's, he's up there, he's out there, he is somewhere. And we think of, we, we think of God as he saves the world. And, but what we forget is that also God knows our name. And God himself isn't out there. What we, what we forget and what, what we don't understand sometimes is that this God who created the universe became God in the flesh to be with us, to be among us, to meet us in our needs and to meet us in our, in our sufferings and to meet us in our pain and to meet us in our sin and to meet us in our own brokenness. He came for us. And I, I want us today, if we can kind of zero in a little bit of a, from a personal reality that God came to dwell among us so that we can be with him. So that we can encounter his power and his presence in our life. Because we couldn't fix ourselves, he came to be with us. But he didn't come and then leave. His spirit remains. And it remains in us. And it remains among us. And we serve a God today that actively wants to minister to you. 
Yes, we think you'll minister to someone else, minister to a group. No, no, no. God wants to minister to you. He knows everything about your life. He knows how many hairs are actually on your head. He knows what you've been through. He knows what has been done to you. He knows what you've done to other people. He knows. And that God who knows and sees all things, instead of running from us, he wants to be near to us and he wants you to open your heart to him today and allow him to minister to you. This woman that we're gonna read is, she's a woman in need. She's a woman that has exhausted everything in her life. And she has an encounter with Jesus that I believe God wants to speak to us with this today. So Mark chapter five says, a great crowd followed Jesus and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years, who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garment, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the, the crowd's pressing around you, Jesus, and, and, and you're asking who touched you? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. In this story, in this account, we see the nature of God. We see the nature of Jesus. That he came not to be on a platform. He didn't come to be on a TV screen. He didn't come to fill stadiums. We see here that Jesus came to be among us in the midst of the crowd, in the midst of all the other things that are happening, he came. This, this shows us this was his purpose, to be among us, to be one of us. And what I love about this, this precious story is this, Jesus refers to this woman, he doesn't call her, hey you, he doesn't say that or her, he says daughter. Because God came to see us and for us to know that he sees us. He came for us to know that he is near us. And today, I, I wonder if there's anyone here who would actually understand that God's heart for you is to speak to you, to know you in a very intimate way, to heal you. I believe the story, as we, as we lean, lean into it, you're, we're, we're going to be encouraged today. And I want us, at the end of this message, we're going to take some time taking communion together. But I just, I, just in my heart, I just, even this morning, I just sense God's heart for people, individuals. That we're just not, it's not that we're human. He didn't die just because, oh, you're a human. He died because you're you. He gave his life because you're you, because you matter to him, because your needs matter to him. You're just not a name or a face, you have a story. And he wants to intersect in our story today and minister to us. What I love, I love about this story is here in the middle of this crowd, everybody's elbowing each other, they're desperate. And the suffering weak woman didn't have the strength to, to do this on her own like everybody else. She, she, she had to do it in a different way and she slips down to the ground beneath people. She crawls until she finally is close enough to touch the edge of his garment that every Jewish man wore. Just to, as we've been studying 
what Jesus has come to do and what God has done. And God sent his son to become us so that we can become everything that he is and receive his righteousness. Just for a moment, she reaches out and she touches the hem of his garment. Now, according to Numbers 15, as we've been looking at, according to the law, what she touched was what's called a tzitzit. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's spelled weird, so that's how I say it. And this, this consists of a specific set of knots and threads. And each one is actually symbolic. And there's five knots to signify or represent the five books of the Bible, the Torah. There's four spaces that's to represent the name of God, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. And so in Hebrew, the, the Hebrew language has also numbers that are connected to, to words. And each letter has, has a number. And so they, they get greater meaning out of that. And so when you, when all of that together though, the word titzit is the number 600. And if you combine the value of 600 with the five knots made from eight threads, of the tzitzit, you come to the number 613. And what you don't, what maybe you don't know is there were 613 laws and commandments in the Torah. And so the purpose of this is to remind the men of Israel that they're to honor the commandments of God. But as we looked at last week, you can't keep all the commandments. If you violate one, you're guilty of all of them. So it's not like you stumble and fall and then, or you don't keep one. It means you've violated all of them. You have violated the law. Now you are guilty. And so this number is all the commandments that you're to obey. And so they understood that this represented the, the, the law. And so this woman reaches out and she touches. And so here's the reality. As we looked at, Jesus came because he has fulfilled all the laws of God perfectly. And he did and he fulfilled them. And our faith in him then gives us what the reward of his obedience. But what I love about this is the prophesied from the Old Testament looking forward, they understood that the Messiah that would come would be one who would keep the law perfectly and that that Messiah that would come, there would be something powerful about the corners or the edges or the tzitzit of their garment. And Malachi chapter four says, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Another translation says his wings. The same word, Hebrew word for wings is the same word for corners. And this is speaking of the tzitzit. You shall go out leaping like calves from a stall. This woman reached out by faith understanding that the Messiah is going to have healing in the edges of their garment. And she made her way through, she reached out, she touched, and she was healed instantly. And so for Jesus, he says, who touched me, the disciples probably were like a lot of people did. Everybody's touching you, and that was true. Many people were crowding around him, but one reached out, one believing he was the Messiah, one received her healing. And then Jesus asked, who touched me? He, th this wasn't an accidental bump. He wasn't talking about this. The word used doesn't mean she, she just bumped into it. She reached out. She grabbed the hem, the corners, the teat seat of his, of his garment, and she clung to it. She didn't have any other options. She didn't gently reach out. She took a hold of it. She took a hold of it with, with, her, with all of her desperation and all of her need. She grabbed it like a, like a drowning person grabs onto a life ring. And this is what I know about God. It's those kind of touches that get his attention. When we are desperate, when we are in need and we reach out and we grab hold, no matter where you are, God always, always responds with a heart of faith and, in, and a person with a need that would look to him. And this woman received a miracle and I believe, I believe that whatever your need is today, as your name, as your story, that the Lord wants to meet you.
I believe that we serve a God that has the power to meet us. And this powerful story of this woman, how she reaches out, we can see also that God's power is available to us in our lives. I don't know how often I don't, I don't actually recognize that or I forget and I try to do things on my own like this woman. And we come to a point where actually God wants to meet us. We come to a point where maybe the God that we crafted in our minds is a God that is far off and, and he's, we're performing for him to get rewards by him. But the reality is the God that we serve is in our midst. He is among us. He wants to move in our lives. He's waiting for his people to actually just cry out to him, to engage with him. And God knowing that we couldn't do these, these things on, on our own, God knowing that in our own brokenness, in our own suffering, like this woman, we come to a point we can't do anything. We, we were all born depraved. And so God sent his son, Jesus, because he came to give us what he had, but it came with a cost. Our freedom today, our deliverance, your your. Life itself, your healing from whatever you're dealing with and going through, our salvation came with a cost. And it's important we understand when, when she reached out and touched the hem of his garment, he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, power has gone out for me. In other words, it's something left Jesus. Something, something came from his Being into her and it brought her healing and life. And that's the same reality as we have today. That the cost of our healing actually cost Christ a tremendous amount. And sometimes we don't realize. As Jesus ministered, we saw that he was tired. We saw that he was sleeping on on a boat. Why? Because he was, it cost him something. We saw him getting away from the crowd because it was costing him. From his own humanity, it was costing him. And when this woman touches Jesus, he feels a loss of power. But also, what he had done is he had taken her uncleanness, her sickness in exchange, and he imparted to her health and purity. This is the reality of the God that we serve, that the divine exchange that Jesus came. He gave us what he had, and he took what we had. Now, none of us had anything that was worth taking, but he took it so that we could respond or we could receive from him. And we need, we need, to, we need to understand what is available to us. When Jesus healed, when he forgave, when he calmed the storm, when he cast out demons, when he addressed the religious critics, he was giving from who he was. It was, it's not like he just, it didn't affect him, it affected him greatly. And when Jesus went to the cross and laid down his life, he did it for us. As he carried the cross, he, didn't, he wasn't just thinking humans. There's the reality is that God in the flesh saw you, knew you, knew your name, carried the cross with your name in mind, bore the suffering on the cross with your name in mind for your freedom, for your deliverance, for your purity, your name. As he endured endured the mocking and the spitting and the beating, he did it with your name in mind. I want us to bring the work of, of Christ to us. I want you to receive that today. To you, your life, your needs, your pain, and what's available to you through him. You matter to God. He sees you. Your story matters to him. The fear that riddles you matters to him. 
The uncertainty that goes over and over in your mind matters to him. The pain that you've endured matters to him. Betrayal, disappointment, it matters. When the prophet Isaiah, he was led of the Holy Spirit, he was prophesying about Jesus coming, about the Messiah. And I want you to know, again, this cost from Jesus for you. It's important we, we see it because it, it helps us to see how much he valued us. How much he, he cared for us. But look at Isaiah 53. It says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we were healed. I, do you see the exchange? His piercing was for our transgression. It cost him. For our iniquities, he was crushed. The punishment that I deserved, he took himself. The wounds were for my healing. This is, this cost him greatly. You did. You cost him greatly. Do you know why? Do you know why he was willing to pay the price for you? Because that's how much he values you. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he cares for you. That's how much he wants you. And it's this beautiful story of God's love that doesn't make human sense. I mean, we're human, so when we fall in love or we get married, it's, it's yeah, it's to serve them, but it's also to serve me. But this love's different. God's love's different. He did it for you to save you. So he was pierced for our transgressions. It means he allowed the Roman soldiers to drive the, the, the nails into his own hands. He was crushed. That means Jesus bore my sins in his body. The tree, on the tree, as, they, as the tree that he created, he was crucified on. The elements of iron that he created were used to hold him to the cross. He was literally crushed beneath the weight of all our iniquities. The punishment was upon him. A holy God has to judge sin. And what is the punishment for sin? It's hell. Jesus, in the moment he, he bore upon himself the sin of the whole world. Remember, all the sin from the old covenant was never removed. It was just pushed forward to the next year. So imagine the mountain of sin that was pushed forward to be pushed and put upon Christ on Calvary and all the sin that would ever be committed came to a point of being upon Jesus. He felt it. The guilt, he felt the, the darkness of it, of murder, of abuse, all of it, he bore it. And he suffered torment, the darkness at midday, when he became sin. It says that he who knew no sin became sin. What happened is he felt for the first time what it felt like to be separate from God. He wasn't, at that point, he wasn't sinless anymore. He had taken on our sin. And there he cries, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt the distance. He had never been without that closeness to God. So why would he do this? Because that's how much he values you. And by his wounds, we've been healed. That's what it cost Jesus to heal that woman 
or to heal us. By his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus cares for those who are in trouble. This woman was in trouble. She was suffering. This woman had to bring Jesus her needs. And this woman grabs the hem of his garment. She's just actually, she just didn't do it to be healed. She's making a statement that she believes, she believes that this is the Messiah. I want you to think about this for a moment. If, if she wasn't healed, then this rabbi would be unclean. According to the law, during a woman's menstrual cycle, she has to be separate. She, she has to stay away. And if she touches someone that is clean, then they become unclean, then they have to go through the process of becoming clean again through the, through the different rituals that, that they would do. And so she reached out in faith. And Jesus is telling this whole world, he stops, he calls her name. He says, who is it? It's her. He says, then you're healed. Your faith has made you whole. This woman activated her faith and she brought, she brought her suffering and her pain to Jesus. And that's what I'd like for us to do today in just a moment when we take communion. I'd like for, I'd like for us to bring our suffering, our pain, our disappointment, our hurts, our, all that I, I would like for us. God invites us to bring us those things. To bring him those things. This woman, she brought, she was physically, physically hurting. She'd been suffering for 12 years with a blood disorder. And this woman was bleeding and it was constant and it didn't stop. And she was weak and she was anemic. Maybe some of you today can relate to this woman. Maybe some of you have been suffering for a long time. You're living with some type of chronic medical problem. I believe that God would invite you today to bring you, to bring him your physical needs. She also brought her financial issues and her, her financial struggles. This woman had spent all of her money on doctors and they didn't, they didn't help her. It says actually she got worse. She was desperate. And, and during these times, doctors didn't understand science and the human body, and they would do the weirdest of things. It actually says in the scripture that she had suffered under the care of physicians. They would do strange remedies. Some were superstitious, but she was trying. She was desperate. I'll, I'll try anything. And she had tried over and over and over again, and to bring her to the place of, I'm broke. She had spent all of her money on all of these ineffective cures. Some of you can probably relate to this precious woman suffering. Maybe you tried to get ahead. Maybe you've, you've, you've done everything you can and you just can't and you don't know what to do. I'm telling you, I'm just inviting you today because I believe God wants to meet us in a fresh, special way as we take communion in just a moment. Have you brought your need to him? Have you reached out and grabbed and understood, Jesus, I believe you can meet my needs. And maybe you have done everything you know according to scripture and you've lived within your means and you've, and you've tried to stay out of debt and you've done all these things that you just can't get ahead. I believe God wants to meet you today. This woman, she was suffering Emotionally. At the time, she was considered an outcast. According to Leviticus 15, as I've already said, her bleeding disorder made her ceremonial, ceremonially unclean. What that means is she has a responsibility to the community. Also, we need to understand that any bed she sat on became unclean. Any place she sat became unclean. Any chair. She really wasn't even supposed to be, be out in the crowd. She was supposed to be locked away and stay away. And she was lonely. She was emotionally destitute. 
person that came to the slightest contact with her would have to wash their clothes and bathe themselves to be ceremonially clean. She was required, imagine this, if she was to walk out into public, she had to declare, unclean, unclean. And the people that were put in her life to be relational to her and meet her needs and friends, and they, they split. They walked away. They got away from her. This is a woman who needed God's touch. She had come to the end of herself. For 12 years lonely, 12 years now broke, 12 years suffering, she was, she was hurting. Some of us kind of can live the same way. Maybe you feel the sense of loneliness. Maybe you feel a sense of isolation. Maybe you're even following Jesus and you think, I'm an outcast. My past, what I've done. Maybe you've lost confidence and you feel unclean. Please hear me today. Jesus can restore you and lift you to your place of dignity, to the place that you can see yourself the way that he sees you. This is our Savior. This is why he came. The reality is Jesus can restore our physical bodies. He can restore the needs in our life. He can restore our emotional needs. That's why he came. And this woman received what she needed. And she did something she had never done before. She just put it all in the hands of Jesus. Such a powerful story, how she, had, as we know, she had lost all hope. But one encounter with Jesus transformed her life. One encounter. This woman experienced what David wrote about in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now look, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you. If, are you finding yourself not satisfied today? Listen, God can satisfy you. Satisfy you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. That's a good word. So if we can, let's stand as we take communion today. If you need to grab your communion cup, you can do that. They're up front, they're also around as well. And you can open the bottom, that's where your the cracker is. <clears throat> What do you need from Jesus today? I've encouraged us that as we walk out the month of November, every day we spend time rehearsing, remembering what Jesus has given to us and for us. So many times I forget, but I believe in a God who, who wants to be among us, who wants to to change our lives, who wants to meet our needs, who wants to heal us, who wants to restore us. Some of us are carrying PTS from a tragic situation. We've never been able to get over it. It's, it affects every, how we see life, how we see relationships, how we, and there's always something in us that we process all these things. Some of us have been so disappointed or so hurt by people, and we just, it is our filter of, of of our lives. Some of us were hurt by a spouse and betrayed and now 
Maybe you're single and you, you, you just can't even think about God bringing you a spouse because you're so hurt. You're so, it just, it's too much pain. Friends, I want you to know something. Jesus is the one who paid it all so that we can be free. I don't believe that we, all, we get healed of every disease. I don't understand. But I believe that God can heal us. I've seen him do it. I've asked him why he didn't and others, but that's not for me to know. But it is for us to believe that God can heal us. Amen? He can heal you. He's willing to heal you. And how he does it, how he chooses, I don't know. Maybe your healing will come with your new body. That, that's, that's good. I don't know. But what I do know is he, he does heal today. Have you asked him to heal you? Or have you just accepted this is the way it is? We serve a God who knows your name. He knows your every thought. And it's important that we, we lean in like this woman at times and we get a hold of the edge of his garment. And we trust him. And we trust him. If we can, just right where you are today, whatever it is that you are needing, physical, financial, emotional, just bring that to the forefront of your mind. Maybe there's an addiction you just you can't see. can't seem to break maybe it's a, a sin you just can't seem to not do it maybe it's unforgiveness you just can't seem to forgive maybe it's fear and you are paralyzed by fear Maybe it's an illness. And you don't know what to do. Lord, we come to this table that you prepared before us with your own body. and your own blood. And Lord, today we come to remember like you told us to, to remember, to rehearse. Don't forget what I've done. That's what you were telling us. Don't forget what I've done for you. Don't forget that I came because you couldn't do it on your own. I did it. And I'll keep doing it in your life. I just need you to bring those things to me. Don't hold on to them. Don't carry the burden yourself. You weren't designed to carry it, God says. I came to bear the burden of all those things that crush you. I was crushed on your behalf. So Lord, today we don't want to forget the benefits of your cross. And so, Lord, today we prepare to eat the cracker. And, Lord, I want to thank you that you, that you bore in your body the curse of sin. And that, Lord, through your body, I can find healing in my physical body. Whatever that is today, just begin to tell them, Lord, thank you that you've healed this. Just, 
Just claim it today. Lord, thank you that through your sacrifice, you did this with this illness in mind. And I thank you today that in you, I can be healed. And so I receive my healing through the work that you've done on the cross. I receive it today. Also, we receive the healing of our emotions. We receive the healing of our broken heart. We receive the healing and deliverance from our fear. Lord Jesus, thank you. And just to thank you that you paid the price so that I could have freedom from, and then you name it. Thank you. And so, Lord, today I remember, I don't forget your benefits. I remember you did that for me. And so, Jesus, we eat of this cracker and recognize it represents your body, that you was pierced, your skin was broken, and you did it for me. Let's eat, friends. Lord, we come to the cup that represents the blood of your new covenant, the new covenant that you satisfied the law, all 613, that I was required and to keep and I couldn't, and it exposed that I need a savior. But Lord, this cup represents the blood of the new covenant that your blood isn't like the blood of goats and bulls that just covers you. This blood removes. Your blood removes sin, removes it from my identity, removes it from my from my being, removes it from who I am. This blood paid the penalty and price for all my sin, and I am forgiven from every sin that I've ever done and any sin I will ever do. Under the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven, and I receive this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Thank you that through it I can find freedom, I can find hope, I can find joy. Thank you that I am not bound as a slave to sin, but because of your blood I am a slave to righteousness. Thank you that this cleanses me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Thank you that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you. for valuing me so much that you would pour out your blood. So I drink this and receive the promises and benefits. <coughs> Lord, today we are grateful for this beautiful story of this precious woman who was demonstrated by her faith, her need, her desperation, that Lord, you are willing and you are able. And so Lord, today I pray that as we conclude our time together that we would just revel and bask and what you've done. May we rehearse, may we search the scriptures for your benefits. In Jesus' name, amen. If you can, I'd like to pray a blessing over you today and just pray God's heart over your life and that he would move in your life in a special way. You know, <clears throat> God's in the business of people. Sometimes in the busyness of church and life and all those things, we can forget that he actually really cares for us. 
and he wants to meet us. Sometimes even church can gather. It's about the, you know, the big and the big screen and the, all the big stuff. No, it's about you because God wants to touch you. So if you can, lift your hands to the Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. That you would minister to your people. That you would heal them. That you would restore them. That you would bring strength and encouragement to them. That you would bless their lives. That they would grow with favor with you and favor with man. Lord, may you remind them that you are before them, you are behind them, you are around them. And Lord, I pray that you would do ridiculous, crazy things with their life as they follow you. We receive that today as your body and your church. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.